chica. All right, in this video we're going to take a look at perpendicular lines. In particular, we'll be focusing on how you can determine if two lines are perpendicular uh, rather than simply intersecting or crossing. And as a reminder, perpendicular lines are two lines that meet at a right angle, uh, which is 90 degrees. So up until now, you've probably focused on uh, lines that you were told were perpendicular and looked at various properties. So now we're going to look at, well, how can I uh, determine if two lines are, in fact, perpendicular? Uh, we're going to look at uh, several examples. Uh, it's going to take a couple minutes, but I think it should help clear things up. So two lines are perpendicular if their slopes are negative reciprocals. And we've got a couple examples here. So 2 over 3 and negative 3 over 2, they'd be negative reciprocals. And uh, negative 4 and 1 quarter would also be negative reciprocals. So let's see what that means. So the negative means that there's opposite signs. So 1 is positive and 1 is negative. Positive 2 thirds, negative 3, and a half, uh, three halves, negative 4, positive a quarter. So our signs are different on negative reciprocals. The reciprocal part means that we uh, switch the numerator, the number on top of the fraction, and the denominator, the number on bottom. So 2 over 3, 3 over 2. 4, which is actually 4 over 1, we'd only show the 1, and 1 over 4. So negative means you switch the sign, and reciprocal means um, you, you change the numerator and denominator. And for the lines to be perpendicular, their slopes must be both negative and reciprocal. So let's look at a couple examples here. So Rust, which of the following lines are perpendicular to the line y equals negative 2 over 5x plus 4? And I've shown that line uh, here on the graph. And what we're focusing on here is the slope. So we want to know what is the slope of the line y equals negative 2, x, uh, 2, 2 over 5x plus 4. And when you're looking for the slope, you want to first make sure it's in functional form, y equals ax plus b, or y equals mx plus b. And the coefficient of the x, so that number before the x, represents the, um, the rate of change or the slope. So in this case, it's negative 2 over 5. It's important you include the sign. And so um, basically, I graph that line. The 4 represents the initial value where it crosses the y-axis. And then negative 2 over 5 means down 2 over 5, down 2 over 5. So if the line's perpendicular, its slope should be a negative reciprocal. So let's look at one. All right, so we have the new line y equals 5 over 2x plus 2. And is this line perpendicular to this one? Well, this is already in functional form, y equals ax plus b. We'll look at the value in front of the x, so 5 over 2. And if that's a negative reciprocal of negative 2 over 5, then the two lines will, in fact, be uh, perpendicular. So let's see what we have here. This one's negative, this one's positive. That means they're negatives. In other words, uh, one's positive and one's negative. Are they reciprocals? 2 over 5, or 2 divided by 5, 5 divided by 2. So yes, in fact, these two lines would be perpendicular. And just to illustrate that, I'm going to graph this line here. So 5x plus, uh, 5 over 2x, pardon me, plus 2. Initial value would be 2, right there. And the rate of change would be 5 over 2. So up 5 over 2 approximately there, or down 5 and 2 uh, to the left. Should put us there. And uh, I'm just going to connect connect these dots to show the line. And when we look, it certainly appears to be uh, perpendicular, which basically supports um, what we've already known. So let's look at a couple other examples here. All right, here's another line, y equals 4 minus 5 over 2x. Well, it looks a little bit different, but it is still in functional form because we have the y isolated. We look in front of the x to determine our, uh, our slope. So the slope here is negative 5 over 2. And while 5 over 2 is a reciprocal of 2 over 5, both of these numbers are negatives, which is different than the negative here. Remember, this negative means that they're opposite signs. So even though they're both negative, that means they're not opposites. So these two lines would not be perpendicular. And we'll look at one more example here. This one's y equals 2.5x plus 7. And a little bit odd here because one of the lines is um, in fractions here, and here we've got it shown as a decimal. So it can be a little bit hard, harder to interpret. Same, it's in functional form, so my rate of change is 2.5, the number in front of my x. And the question is, is 2.5 the negative reciprocal of negative 2 over 5? Well, first we can look at the negative part. This is negative, this is positive. So there are negatives to one another, so that fits. Is 2.5 the reciprocal of uh, 2 over 5? And I'm going to show you a couple ways that you could uh, determine this. One, I could try and convert this to a fraction. So I'm going to bring up my calculator. 
So our 2 divided by 5 equals 0 0.4. So this here is 0 0.4. And now while well, is 2 and a half, or pardon me, is that um, is uh, 0 0.4 and 2 and a half, are they reciprocals? Well, if you look at your calculator, I've got a button here, and it's, uh, it's called the reciprocal or inverse button, and it's written as x to the power of negative 1. Some calculators will have another button that looks at 1 over x, and they mean the same thing. They're called the inverse uh, button. And what it does is, uh, just for warning, it flips the numerator and denominator and tells us what that value. So this is saying 2 divided by 5 was negative 4, and if I invert it, it says 2.5. So these two numbers are, in fact, reciprocals. And since they're negatives, that means that they would also, um, that they would also be perpendicular. So they're negative reciprocals. Um, we could also have looked at the 2.5, and if we inverted that, it would say 0.4. So there you go. The other way that you could do is you could convert 2.5 to a fraction, which would be uh, 5 divided by 2. And then again, we could compare them as fractions. It would be easy from there. So let's like, take a look at a couple more complicated examples. So in our next one, uh, we're asked, is the line negative 2x plus 0.5y equals 1 perpendicular to the line 8x minus 2y equals 12? Now what's a bit trickier about this one is we can't just look at the number in front of the x right off and say that these two lines are not perpendicular. Before we can do that, we have to put the lines in functional form. So we have to rearrange it so that rather than it being like they are now, that they're written as y equals ax plus b. So to do that, I want to get the y by itself. I just want to be left with y equals everything else on the other side. So I'm just going to apply basic algebra. So I'm going to get rid of my 2x over here by adding 2x. Again, when we're doing algebra, principle of opposites. Negative 2x plus 2x, that'll cancel out. Uh, but of course, if I add 2x over to one side, if I want to keep my balance, I have to do the same to the other side and add 2x. So over here, I'm left with 0.5y. And I can't add together 2x plus 1, uh, 2x and 1, pardon me, because they're not like terms. So I'm going to leave it like that. And then now we've got to get rid of the 0 0.5 by dividing by 0 0.5. Again, because it's 0.5 times y. And whatever we do to one side, we do to the other side. So 0 0.5 divided by 0 0.5 is 1, so that cancels out. 2 divided by 0 0.5. Again, we could bring up the calculator for that if you wanted. And it comes up to 4. So if you remember your rules of um, dividing by a decimal or a fraction to invert, and multiply. So this is 4x, and then 1 divided by a half. Well, how many halves go into 1? Well, that would be 2. So we'd have 4x plus 2. And since we're focusing on the slope or the rate of change, that would be 4. All right, well, what's the slope of our second line? Same idea here. I'm going to take the 8x to the other side. 8x minus 8x is 0, so that cancels out. I'm left with negative 2y. Over here, I've got negative 8x plus 12. And now we've got to get rid of the negative 2. And since it's negative 2 times y, I'm going to divide by negative 2. And sometimes people divide by negative 2y, but I don't want that because then I cancel the y out as well. I want to leave the y, so we just get rid of the negative 2. So negative 2 divided by negative 2 is 1, leaving just the y. Negative divided by negative is positive. 8 divided by 2 is 4, so I've got positive 4x. Positive divided by negative is negative, and 12 divided by 2 is 6. And so we look at this line, and the rate of change here is 4. Actually, so these ones, they're not perpendicular, because 4 and 4 are not negative reciprocals. In fact, these two lines would be parallel, because they have the same rate of change. And um, we looked at parallel lines in one of the uh, earlier videos, so you could take a look at that if you needed as well. So these two lines would, uh, would not be perpendicular. And we're going to look at one last example, a little bit different again. So in this case, pardon me. Real. In this case, we're told that a line passes through the points A with coordinates of negative 12 and 17, and B with coordinates of negative 4 and negative 11. And we're asked, is this line perpendicular to the line 2x minus 7y equals 23? So once again, we need to find out, well, what are the slopes of these lines? I'm going to do the one here that's given the equation first, because we've already done that. So we can kind of whip through that pretty quickly. We have negative 7y 
equals negative 2x plus 23. We divide both sides by negative 7. This cancels out. y equals negative divided by negative is a positive, so we're left with 2 over 7x. Oh, pardon me, not plus. Positive divided by negative is a negative, so this would be minus 23 over 7. And I actually find it easier to leave these as fractions because it's easier to tell if they're, uh, if they're reciprocals. But like we did before, you could use your um, calculator to divide them and get a decimal and then check that way. So we know the rate of change of the second line, but in order to do the first one, we're going to have to go back to your rate of change formula, delta y over delta x, or I prefer y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And it doesn't matter which point is which, so I'll call this my first point. So x1, y1, and this is my second point. So x2, y2. Again, the uh, the ones and twos are just to, so we can separate the points. Sometimes people call this x, a, y, a, and x, b, y, b. That'd be fine as well. So we can fill our values into the formula. y2, that's negative 11, minus y1, which is 17, divided by x2, which is negative 4, minus negative 12. I'm going to put that in negative 12 in brackets. I like to do that anytime we have two negatives together. Negative 11 minus 17 gives me negative 28. And then down here we have negative 4 minus negative 12. Now remember your rules again of, of um, integers. Minusing a negative is like adding. So this is really like negative 4 plus 12, which would give us positive 8. Now, rate of change over here we said was 2 over 7 and this one we've got to be negative 28 over 8 but before we uh, go any further we're going to reduce that and we'll notice that both the top and the bottom can divide by 4 so 28 divided by 4 is 7 so this becomes negative 7 8 divided by 4 is 2 so this particular the line that passes through the points A and B oops pardon me will uh, I'll just erase this part. We'll have a rate of change or a slope of negative 7 over 2. This one's negative, this one's positive, so that works. 7 over 2, 2 over 7, so they are negative reciprocals and they would in fact be, um, be perpendicular. If you wanted to do it with decimals, again we go back to our calculator, we have put in 2 over 7 and it would give you this really weird decimal like long continuing. That's why I prefer to do it with fractions. Um, but we can still do it with decimals. I'm going to hit my inverse button and the inverse of 0.2857 and so on is three and a half. And well, I can take 28 divided by 8 and it gives me three and a half. So again, confirming that they are in fact uh, inverses and in this case negative reciprocals. Hope this helped. Thanks for watching. Check out our other videos. Bye-bye now. You're still here? It's over. Go home. Go.